independent lines in French-speaking Switzerland. Neon to saint sergue opened as late as July 1916. At filming in 1958, the original passenger vehicles were still in daily use. Replacements weren't to arrive until 1985. At Trelay, the other train's conductor gets us soaking as he nips out to throw the points. That was Grenolier. This is Artsier. Front and rear controllers must be mechanically interlinked. Neon to saint sergue is about 12 miles. The line climbs just over 2,100 feet into the Jura. It was electrified at 2,200 volts DC from the outset. Handschrunts ought to be history, since a small tracteur arrived in 1984. Beyond saint sergue the line continues five miles to La Cure on the French border, climbing over 600 feet, mostly at 1 in 20, then descending 250 feet even more steeply. One man car boarded the front. Marcier. This line was extended over the border to Moray in 1921, about seven miles and another 1,400 feet of descent. Le Mouy. La Cure to Moray closed in 1958. By then, service on the French sector was very sparse. Passenger vehicles built for the French sector differed in detail and may still be ridden on the La Mure line near Grenoble. So we arrive in Neil to terminate in the street opposite the CFF station. Orge to Bière opened in 1895 and was steam operated until 1943, so this is the original electric stock built at Schlieren. Unfortunately, Morge station is now dominated by a noisy motorway viaduct. The climb is a mere 1 in 28, almost gentle for Swiss metre gauge, up onto the plateau, here guarded by the Chateau Vouflon. I wonder if milk cans still wait on the platform at Bussy. This time clearer weather allows a look across Lake Geneva to the nearer Savoy Alps. From our next stop, Aple, a branch was opened to Lille in 1896. Nominally independent, it was absorbed three years later into BAM. Aple to Lille is six and a half miles with no passing loop, rising only about a hundred feet. The connection to the branch faces away from Morge. This simplifies detaching and attaching the occasional wagon hauled behind the passenger trains. Is it as cold as its name? This is Fradville. So far this line seems to serve only an agricultural area, but Bière has one of the Swiss Army's main training establishments. So no wonder funds were available for electrification in 1943, when imported coal would be in short supply. The BAM was the first narrow gauge line electrified at the CFF's 15,000 volts AC. We've climbed almost 1,100 feet in the 11 and 3 quarter miles from Morge. As Bière lies at the foot of the heavily forested Jura Mountains, Timber continues to be an important traffic for the Bière à Plamorge. Outside Moudon CFF station, car numbered 191, La Broie, waits to take us to Lausanne. Leaving Moudon, we cross the river Broie, after which the tram is named. That's the CFF Broie Valley line, from Payerne to Palaisieux. This rural tramway was opened in stages during 1902 by Regiono Electrique du Jura. It was electrified from the start at 750 volts DC. Trolley pole pickup had become rare in Switzerland by this time. Vouillant halt. 
In Carouge village, there was a 15 kilometer, that's 10 miles an hour, speed restriction. Oddly, the older style freight motor sports a pantograph. From here, Mézier to Moudon was closed in 1962. The remainder of the line in the following year. In recent years, the replacement bus route has become so busy that double deck vehicles are now used. Agricultural traffic had been quite significant on this line. Here's number 415 on a freight at Montprever. Les Coulets halt. We pass the edge of St. Catherine's Forest. These milk cans at Chalet à Gobe may be empties returned by the freight we've just seen. Number 74 waits on the Savigny branch to make the connection with our through car into town. Epalage Depot with a works car outside. And on Epalage Loop we pass motor 193 with an outward service. Quite close to the city now. now, I dare say all this will have been built over in the years since this was filmed. Wrong side of the road into La Salaz. Our rural genre line joined the city system here, but that line's now become a trolley bus. Place de Lourdes, and through the road tunnel to terminate in Lausanne's Place Tunnel, beside some city trams. Ushi, Lausanne's lakeside quarter, looks across to the Savoy Alps above the French shore. Fashionable Ushi, with its steamer pier, was connected to central Lausanne in 1877 by the first Swiss funicular. The standard gauge line was reopened as a rack railway only months before this was filmed. All platforms are on the east side, so the coaches have doors on that side only. This is Jean Dille. The passing station, Montrion, is an odd two-level affair. The ascending train arrives first, then track behind its stopping position becomes the platform for the other train. Now we will run under the mainline station to stop at the platform of L.O.'s Gare CFF. An intensive service is provided on a second track from here to Flon, the top station. Opened in 1879 as a funicular, this was converted in 1954.